To install Acolyte, you'll need a chain tool, a 4 and 5 mm Allen wrench, a torque wrench, a cable cutter, and a tape measure. When you're installing the rear derailleur, one of the important concepts to understand is what to do with the B-tension washer. That's this part right here. You want to make sure it's rotated far back enough to be in contact with the B-tension adjustment screw. Uh, you also want to make sure it's not in the way of the derailleur hanger at all. You can go ahead and use a 5 millimeter Allen wrench to kind of hand tighten the derailleur onto the uh, derailleur hanger. And then make sure that the derailleur rotates freely back and forth. To complete the rear derailleur attachment process, grab a torque wrench with a 5 millimeter bit and tighten the attachment bolt down to 8 to 10 newton meters. Now it's time to adjust the high limit screw. That's the one marked with an H on the back of the derailleur. You want to turn that until the guide pulley lines up with the outer edge of the smallest cog on the cassette. When you're cutting the cable housing, you want to make sure that there's not too much of a bend. Uh, that can cause extra friction for the cable to get through and affect shifting performance. You also want to make sure that the housing isn't too short. If the rear derailleur can rotate at all uh, forward like that, that's not good. You want there to be just a slight amount of bend like this. You want the housing to come out of the rear derailleur pretty straight uh, and then bend towards the frame. You can also consult with your frame manufacturer. They should have guidelines for the best way to route cable on whatever frame you have. To install the shifter cable, Use the index trigger to shift to the highest gear. Then there's a little hole behind the index trigger. Fish the cable through there uh, in one end and out the other. Try to do maybe a little better job than I did. You pull the cable all the way through and then make sure that the head is completely secured uh, in the shifter body. After that, you can route the rest of the cable through the housing and back to the rear derailleur. Once the cable is through all the housing, you'll need to route it underneath the cable fixing bolt. There's a little groove underneath. Make sure to get it through the groove and underneath the washer and the bolt. Kind of pull it through and make sure it's well seated under there. I'm going to hand tighten this and then use a torque wrench to make, tighten it and make sure that it's tightened to somewhere between 5 to 7 newton meters. Next, it's time to cut the excess cable. It's okay to bend the cable a little bit out of the way so that it doesn't get into the derailleur at all. You can see there's a little bit of slack at the end. That's nice for the next mechanic so that they have an easier time adjusting it. Next, it's time to attach a cable end. You can use the cable end of your choice. Here I'm using a side cutter to just gently crimp the end to tighten it. There are a lot of different ways to do that. Once the cable has been installed, you'll want to deactivate the spring lock chain retention system. There's a switch right on top of the derailleur that releases all the tension in the derailleur cage and then allows you to move the cage more easily to make it easier to install the chain. To properly size the chain, wrap it around the front chain ring and the largest cog on the cassette. Then take the two ends and compare them and find out where they first overlap. For chains with a quick connector, you want to find the spot of first overlap and add two inner links and cut the chain there. For chains without a quick connector, you'll want to add another empty outer plate onto the end of that so that you can reconnect the chain. In this example, we're using a chain that has a quick connector. That's by far the most common type of chain. So that means that we want to have an inner link on the end of each side of the chain so that we can use the quick connector to connect in the middle. We're using a chain tool here. They're all a little different, so make sure that uh, you're following the instructions that came with your chain tool. We're going to pop out a pin and then use the quick connector to connect them back in the middle. Route the chain over the smallest cog on the cassette, then in front of the guide pulley, and make sure to get the chain behind the derailment plate on the cage of the derailleur. It's just a little metal tab on the cage of the rear derailleur. Uh, you go behind that and then behind the tension pulley on the derailleur and then through to the other end of the chain coming off the chain ring. From there it's time to connect the two loose ends of the chain. Here we're using a quick connector. Notice that the chain is off the front chain ring. That just makes it a little easier to make the ends meet. Once you've got the quick connector attached, 
route the chain back over the chain ring, and then pedal forward with the brakes on to get it set. Once the chain is installed, it's time to turn the spring lock chain tensioner back on. You use a five millimeter Allen wrench and turn about a quarter turn until it clicks. It's important to do that so that when you're adjusting the shifting, everything is set up properly. To adjust the cable tension on the shifter, start in the smallest cog and then use the thumb trigger to shift up to the next largest cog. If it's slow, turn the barrel adjuster on the shifter counterclockwise. That will elongate the housing and ultimately make the cable tension tighter. Keep doing that. Uh, it might take a little bit until the shifter shifts up to the next cog. From there, just keep shifting up and down the cassette to make sure that all of the shifts happen quickly and easily. If you need to adjust it a little more, go ahead and do that. If the derailleur is slow to shift to a smaller cog, that means that there's too much cable tension uh, and you need to release some of it. So you do that by turning the barrel adjuster on the shifter clockwise. That releases some of the tension and allows the chain to get to the smaller cog more quickly. Keep making little adjustments until it shifts perfectly. The lower limit screw stops the rear derailleur from throwing the chain past the largest cog into the spokes. To adjust that properly, use a 3mm Allen wrench and tighten it until you can't move the rear derailleur past that last cog. Last step is to adjust the B-tension screw on the back of the derailleur. To adjust that, you use a 3mm Allen wrench. By tightening it, you move the B-tension pulley farther away from the largest cog on the cassette. You want to keep turning until there's about 11 to 13 millimeters of distance between the pulley and the cassette. 